All right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. <laughs> Sorry I've been gone. Uh, I've been working a lot lately, getting some stuff done, and I've been kind of out of it on the YouTube end, so I am I apologize for that. And check this out. Today I want to show you a really quick little method of how to get a, a transparent um, shader, uh, so to speak, without just using like say the shading properties or transparency properties in in like a blend shader. Um, what I have here is just a simple object, um, a backdrop, and let's take a look at that. Just see see the setup here. A single point light, um, just a, a cylindrical type object, and a backdrop. Okay, so basically that's all there is to it right here, just a point light. And what I want to show you is sort of a uh, a good sort of second best to the transparency of say like a blend material and um, here it is in the hypershade uh, basically it's a, a what we call a sampler info node hooked up to a ramp that's then hooked into the transparency channel of the blend material okay now um, here's a regular blend right here blend number two and I'm going to go ahead and assign this object right here I'm going to assign that object that blend too, okay? And technically, in, with a blend material, you have a transparency channel right here, which you can kind of vary the transparency a bit, okay? And that's cool and all, but look what happens if I just sort of do a quick render of, of say, a transparency set right there. Um, yeah, you just get your basic transparency levels, okay? Um, and you know it, it, it works um, there's nothing all that wrong with using just transparency on the material itself but when we hook it up to say like the the sampler info node and a ramp we can get a lot more variance with our um, transparency okay so we can get a, a much better look um, with darks and lights and, and various shading aspects by using that sampler info node with a ramp okay so let's do this really quick I want to show you kind of how it's done um, I'm gonna come over here and I think what I'll do is just create a new blend so I'll be working with blend number three okay so I'm gonna go with a uh, just pull up a normal surface blend right there and I think I'll, I'll clear my graph uh, just to keep this straight and I'm going to take this blend three and there it is okay so here's our blend now in order to get this working it's really simple all you need to do is just come down here into your 2d textures we're going to create a ramp okay and on that ramp we don't really need this place 2d texture node because we're going to we don't really need it so I'm just going to delete that and then what we want to do is go into the utility section and come down to our sampler info and it's usually right down here at the bottom so I'm going to click on sampler info okay and now what I want to do is just um, middle mouse button drag and drop from over the middle mouse button on the sampler info drag drop it onto the ramp and I'm going to hit default and that will bring up the dreaded connection editor <laughs> okay so what you want to do is just make sure that your sampler info is loaded in this slot over here reload left and it's gonna say from and then to so it's from the sampler info node 2 to the ramp 2 right here or ramp 1 yours might be 1 okay so essentially if yours does not look like that let's let's just mess this up a little bit I'm gonna I'm gonna switch this from side to side here and you know let's just say we reload the left okay so let's say yours doesn't look like this at all all you need to do is we want to be going um, from to okay so click on that and make sure that it says from and to and then the sampler info node if you click on your sampler info node right here I'm gonna bring that to the side a little bit come over here and just go reload left it'll reload that sampler info node um, for example if I were had the ramp chosen over here if I select my ramp and I reload my left it's gonna reload the ramp over here 
and now I have a ramp and a ramp. So I could maybe click on my sampler info node here and reload my right, and now my sampler info is over here on the right. But technically, I want to be going from the sampler info node to the ramp. So I could switch that around and do things backwards, okay? But in this case, I want you to kind of just know that in order to reload the left and the right, just choose what you want over here. And in this case, we want our sampler info node. We want to reload that. We want to make it go from to the ramp. So I'm going to click on my ramp over here and in my connection editor reload the right. Okay? So there you go. Now over here you can see where, let's see if I can get my windows in here, right? All you have to do is just select the facing ratio from your sampler info node and we're going to plug that into the ramp to UV coordinate into the V coordinate. Okay, so UV coordinate, we're going to choose V coordinate, and you'll notice it turns red like that. And you know, that's cool. It's exactly what we want, and no big deal. So now I can select my ramp 2 over here, middle mouse button, drag and drop it on top of the blend 3, and I'm going to hook it up to the transparency right there. Okay, and right away you'll notice that it has uh, kind of a ramp look to it. Okay, so I'm going to close my connection editor. I'm going to move my hypershade out of the way, and I'm going to click on my object here, and I'm gonna, going to assign that existing material that's that blend 3. Okay, so right away you can see where that blend 3, the ramp is attached, it's transparent, and everything's looking pretty good. Now, let's go take a closer look at this transparency and the ramp. Yours should look like this. It has a little arrow in the box. If you click on that, that'll take us to the ramp. And now that I'm at the ramp, I may want to just get rid of the green by clicking on this X in the box. And in the bottom here, I'm going to set the red to a black color. And then I'm going to choose the blue up here and set that to a white. Okay, so now we have a beautiful black to white uh, transparent node and everything is right with the world. Okay, so let's do a quick render. Let me bring my render window over here. And I think I'll move it forward here a little bit. Let's just see what our look is there. I'm going to do a render. Okay, and if all goes well, yours should look just like that. Okay, um, let's back off that a little bit there. And there you go. Let's do another render. I'm going to just sort of go into interactive rendering here, but we'll get the whole thing in there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, let's do something interesting. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and go into interactive rendering mode right here. I'm just going to click this IPR, and I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose that right there like just, you know, marquee select that object. And now if I go to my um, ramp, I'm going to select the ramp right there. If I just sort of like make some various changes, you can see where we can bring the black value up or down a bit and you can kind of see what's happening there. As I compress these further together, we're getting um, quite a bit of, you know, variance in, in the way that that transparency is being seen, okay? And so that's cool. So I'm going to bring this back down and bring this one back up. And interactively, I'm, I'm seeing that update as I make those changes. Now, if I don't want just a linear, I could go to, say, maybe an exponential up type um, transparency. And that looks OK. Let's go to the exponential down. So it all depends on what you're doing. Um, you know, how much transparency you want to see in there and exactly what, um, yeah, exactly how you want it to look, which is very cool. Now, um, I may want to select my, my um, object here, come into this blend three and change its overall color a little bit. I might change that up to something like a, a glass, kind of like a frosted glass look. Okay, and you can see where by just changing that color a little bit starts to add in, you know, that color into the overall mix. 
And this is really cool because um, as you sort of work with this method, um, there's ways to sort of add a, a color, you know, logo label that has an alpha channel and everything else that shows up on here as well. Um, that's going to be a tutorial for a different um, different day. But I mean, you know, essentially just get used to hooking up a sampler info node uh, to your transparency with a ramp. And this is what you're going to get. I'm going to go ahead and just do a, a quick full render. Voila. And there you go. Okay. A real effective transparency shader with the uh, sampler info node. <laughs> Okay, nothing too big, nothing too complicated. So there you go. Just wanted to get something back online here, tell you all hello, and I'm back, and um, it's time to get started. All right, again, <laughs> more tutorials. Okay, well, great. Uh, thanks for watching, and as always, read a book, uh, be a good person, as always, and um, stop back for another tutorial. Um, I'm going to be making quite a few more, so... There you go. Hope you're all doing well.